Welcome to Flashpoint. I'm Mike Garofalo with Victory News. Gene Bailey will be joining us from the beach. Pastor Hank Kuhneman, Constitution Coach Rick Green, and Greg Stevens will be joining us. And Gene uh, for the special edition of Flashpoint. First, we start with the historical guilty verdict of former President Donald Trump in the New York hush money or so-called hush money trial. A few hours ago, after deliberating for essentially a day and a half, less than 12 hours, the jury returned the verdict. Donald Trump found guilty on all 34 felony counts of falsifying business records. The former president spoke to the media shortly after the verdict was announced. This was a disgrace. This was a rigged trial by a conflicted judge who was corrupt. It's a rigged trial, a disgrace. They wouldn't give us a venue change. We were at 5% or 6% in this district, in this area. This was a rigged, disgraceful trial. But the real verdict is going to be November 5th by the people. And they know what happened here, and everybody knows what happened here. And Donald Trump didn't stop there. He wasted no time pointing a finger at Joe Biden and the Biden administration. And this was done by the Biden administration in order to wound or hurt an opponent, a political opponent, and I think it's a, just a disgrace. And we'll keep fighting, we'll fight till the end, and we'll win. So, Gene, for the first time ever, a former president was charged with and found guilty of a felony, in this case, 34 charges. Not surprisingly, some political analysts are calling this verdict a travesty. Back to you. Thanks, Mike. Glad to be with you guys tonight. Uh, first off, Mike, what are you hearing from around the news world? Is there shock at this? Or did they kind of expect it? Yeah, I, I want to say people were kind of expecting this. I think people were hoping this wouldn't happen. We wouldn't get to this place. This country wouldn't have to go through this mess. But you know what? We're here, and, and it was not the biggest surprise. Back to you. No, it's not. Thanks, Mike. All right, let me bring in uh, Rick Green and Hank Kuhneman. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us tonight. Of course, I was supposed to be at the beach which I am, so we put this together at the last moment uh, to be joining. Uh, all right, so Rick, let's talk about that. Same question. Are you surprised at this verdict? No, I think we've all been kind of prepared for this, right? We've been so shocked over the last few years that the justice system has uh, devolved to this, that uh, we, we expected this to happen. And Gene, this might surprise you. Man, I'm going to say great. I'm glad. Uh, I'm, I'm going to just claim God's word right here. You know, we're supposed to count it all joy when we experience various trials, which we're experiencing as a nation right now. We also know that what the enemy means for evil, God's going to turn to good. And we know that all things work together for good for those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And I truly believe from a, just a practical perspective, this is good in the long run because all those people that have been abused by the justice system over the last few years who did not have the platform or the voice of a Donald Trump, their voices are now going to be heard because millions of people are going to say, what? Are you kidding me? I mean, they're going to begin to learn over the next few weeks just how corrupt this judge was. You know, we've all been listening. We've all been paying attention, but most people haven't. Now they're going to learn how corrupt this judge was, that his daughter was making money off of this trial and off of the Democrats, mm -hmm. uh, that this case was thrown together with right. out-of-date statutes and statute of limitations that were passed, that Donald Trump was not even allowed to bring witnesses that he wanted to bring. I mean, that's in the Constitution that you can call witnesses for yourself and confront yeah. those against you. So anyway, mm -hmm. I just think in the long run, we're going to count it all joy because this is actually exposing, as we've said here on Flashpoint, what happened. And, uh, and so I don't want people to be depressed by this. I think they should be encouraged that right. the light is being shown on the corruption. That's and right. And this is going to be the inflection point where we can turn this thing around. Absolutely. Amen. I'm going to get to Pastor Hank. But, Rick, let's walk through the process because I've already been inundated with text messages and uh, emails like, all right, so what happens next? I understand <clears throat> three, three months until he's actually supposedly uh, going to get uh, punishment doled out. Uh, does in between now and then the appeal process kicks in? What happens next? Yeah, Gene, you know, I mean, there's a decent chance here that that they would get an appellate process going fast enough that finally somebody with some sanity would slap this down. An adult would step into the room and say, no, we're not going to let you jail 
the former president of the United States over these absolutely bogus charges. I mean, this is, you know, Joseph Stalin would be so proud of Joe Biden right now. I mean, really, he he, he is uh, looking up from hell right now saying, great job, Joe. You're doing this even better than I did with my show trials uh, in, in communism. Uh, but but no, I, I think there is a chance for some sort of appellate thing to, to put a stop to this. I think I've seen maybe mid-July was when they were going to sentence, maybe right before the uh, uh, Republican convention. That would be the best for the Democrats in terms of show trial and when right. this would happen. I, I do think there's a really good chance he doesn't actually go to jail over this. Let's not forget this. These are minor, minor, minor charges. But we know that the New York Democrats are doing everything they can to try to see him actually behind uh, you know, a, 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 a prison cell. They want to see the bars, man, on, on the other side. They want to see Trump on the other side of bars. That's, That's their right. dream. They lie awake at night trying to figure out how to make it happen. But, but I think odds are that doesn't happen. But that mm -hmm. still gives Joe Biden what he wants in the campaign to be able to say it's, it's a convicted felon. We can't allow it. You know, that's what they're already right. screaming and, and yelling. But I think it's going to increase our resolve, and millions more people are flocking to Trump right now as a result of this. Look at the big rally in the Bronx even before this happened. Look at the 100,000 people mm -hmm. at his other rally. People are flocking, as we've said here on Flashpoint, for a year because they see the injustice. So I think it helps Trump in the long run for November. More importantly, it helps the country because it exposes the corruption that we can finally clean out the rot in our legal system. I, I so agree, Rick. And I, I got to tell you, I, it's, it's almost comical because no matter what happens, Trump goes up in the ratings, his poll numbers skyrocket. <laughs> Uh, you right. get a mugshot, mm -hmm. it ends up on coffee cups and T-shirts across the nation. Uh, so this is, I want to tell everybody at home, just calm down. It's going to be okay. That's I know right. it, it's, right. it, to, for some of us, it was shocking. It was surprising, but not really. You, you kind of knew if we were at this point, it could go the rest of the way. But let me bring in uh, Pastor Hank Kuhneman from, from his home there in Omaha. Pastor Hank, uh, yeah. we've talked about this, that, that this is not a time to freak out or panic, but just to hold on. T talk to the people. Well, first and foremost, thank you for having me on, Pastor Gene, and you as well from the, the beach there. It seems like every time you go on vacation, something happens. Last time, the raid, the, you know, the raid on uh, Mir Largo, and now this. But here's what God wants us to know, uh, those of you that have been tracking with the Lord. You know, we've been doing this, Pastor Gene, for almost four years now, coming up here in just a few months. And there were times when we would look at the camera and we would speak uh, perspective that at the time, it did not look like it was even realistic or that it would play out uh, according to what we were saying. And one of such example, God said there would come a time when things would begin to be heated up in our country, but there would be a boomerang. In other words, those who would seek for indictments, they themselves would be indicted. Those that would bring accusations, the accusations would boomerang and would be turned on them. We have seen that through the process over the last four years. Another specific uh, encouragement tonight is remember, God said, you will see things flop. It will look like it is absolutely over. And then it will flop and then flip. And it will turn in the way of the favor of God. You have to remember Daniel in the lion's den, for anyone looking on the outside, it looked like Daniel uh, would have been eaten by the lions. Come on, President Trump has been thrown to the lions. But there's something that happened to Daniel, and that was this, the preservation of God, which is on our country right now, and the preservation that is on this president. And in the same way, God is going to close the mouths of these absolute lunatics who think that they're going to get by with this. They're not. It's going to flop. It's going to reverse. And the lion's mouths will be closed. And what's also important is you have three things happening. This is no surprise, so we just need to relax. No. Anyone with any common sense, Pastor Gene, and I have walked uh, my three German shepherds with my little Shih Tzu, so we have four dogs I walk at the same time, and people stop me, including Democrats, and they say, we are outraged with what we're seeing in uh, this case with New York. This is absolutely bogus. This should not be happening in our legal system. And all of this is going to begin to backfire. So you have the obvious. The obvious is this is a scam. 
Second, according to what Rick said, who's a, a legal uh, you know, expert, this thing is going to begin to play out, and there has to be an appeal. And there's going to be something that is going to bring the justice of God that ultimately will set this thing in order. Third thing, lastly, there's the prophetic. You cannot discount what God has said ahead of time just because it doesn't look like it. Okay, you have to let the prophetic words play out. God said these things would fall like feathers, Pastor Gene. We've said that on Flashpoint before all of these indictments. Look at all the other things that happened with Georgia and then and Mir Largo, and it's all falling apart. It doesn't mean when God says that like feathers are going to fall apart and have no weight, it doesn't mean there isn't going to be uh, an indictment. It doesn't mean that they're going to not put, watch this, a mugshot. You know, they're, they're, they're going to they're gonna try, but it means the ultimate outcome. This is what you have to hear, those of you that are watching. The ultimate outcome is it will have no weight. It's going to fall apart. Why? Because we have stood and we have God's attention. And just like Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, there is the intervention of God that comes. And when God's intervention comes... What looks hopeless begins to be injected with the hope of God. What looks like it won't turn out right, it gets set and brought into order by God. And this is what the Lord is doing. He wants you to be encouraged. He's involved. He's got his hand on this country. He's got his hand on President Trump. And this, too, will fail. Amen. All right, uh, Rick, I, I knew you had a comment there. Go ahead. Well, I, first of all, uh, Hank pointed out something that I had forgotten, that you went on vacation when the when the raid happened. So if Trump wasn't so busy right now, he'd probably be texting you saying, uh, Gene, please don't go on vacation anymore. Like, never, <laughs> ever again until really? I'm done with, with public life. Uh, but but I got a confession to make. I, 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 I really did think several times over the last year and a half that, that Hank just had the worst, not only the worst dad jokes in, in the history of dad jokes, but I thought, man, what he's saying, I just, I, I, I don't, man, I had a, I would, I would really have to struggle and say, can that really happen? And, and he would have these prophecies, and I'd be like, man, I hope that happens, but Lord, help my unbelief, right? And I cannot, I mean, here we are, and we got the whole Fannie Willis thing where she was totally discredited. This judge in this case has been totally discredited. Everybody knows that his daughter's been making money as a Democrat operative off of this stuff. The Jack Smith stuff discredited all of these things, even with the, the, the you know, conviction today, discredited in the public eye, falling like feathers. Everything that Hank has, has been saying, it's happening. And, and I really, part of what surprised me was they're usually better at this. Like usually they go after one of our people and they create these charges and they make it look really good. And then they go after one of their own that they wanted to get rid of anyway. So it looks like they're being unbiased and that they're being, you know, not a two-tier justice system. They, they have failed miserably at that over the last year. They have shown their true colors. They have shown how biased they are. They have shown how uh, hypocritical they are. They have shown that they're willing to lie and cheat and steal. And that stuff is being exposed and it's being shown. So my confession is, I have to admit, I wasn't so sure. I'm usually the optimist, right? I saw all this stuff coming down, and there was a part of me going, man, how in the world, Lord, how are you going to do this? I think there's a lot of people at home that may be feeling that after the convictions today. I'm telling you, listen to what Hank just said. I've learned to listen, and God has increased my faith. I hope it does. he does it for you at home as well. Mm -hmm. Pastor, yeah, Jim, amen. Can I add amen. to that real quick? Yeah. You know, it, this this sure. is not a, just about Donald Trump. This is about what God That's wants right. to do in the earth for something that he is looking at, and it's it's called redemption. And as long as the Spirit of God is in the earth, God always has a redemptive plan. You say, what is that? A plan of help and a plan of hope. And so God's not going to leave us you know, uh, without hope and without help, especially when we've got people that are using their faith. Faith is what moves God. Faith is what takes hopeless situations and turns them around. And people go, how in the world did that happen? Faith and the intervention of God who honored our faith. So I say that because this isn't just about President Trump. It's about you, the people. It's about what Jesus is looking at. He wants a harvest. And we are in the middle of the greatest awakening and harvest that this world ever seen. But let's talk about what Rick said for a moment about the prophetic word. Because there's some of you that might be watching. You're going, you know, what, you know, prophecy, come on, I don't believe it. Well, what do you do when God prophesies out in California, for example, on a Flashpoint Live, and says that there's going to be a triple rainbow that will appear in California that will be a sign into this nation that God is touching? 
approaching three generations. It happens a month later. What do we do when God said last year that there would be uh, 100 degree temperatures that would not be seem to be broken over the country uh, for a purpose that God is showing redemption? Uh, and that happened. What do we do when God begins to say on April 7th of this year that uh, there's going to come a regime change in Iran and that their headship would be cut off? We just saw that happen. The list is going on and on and on and on and on of how many times God is honoring prophetic words. But there's one specific one that I think we have to go back to that I have here br very briefly from May 20. One, May 23rd of 2021, God said there's two that he's put his hand on, Netanyahu and Donald Trump. And he lists them in that order. If we go back to what happened with Netanyahu, the same scenario, they were trying to criminalize Netanyahu. They were saying that he would be in jail. They were saying that his political career was over. Guess what? God's prophetic word from May 23rd, 2021 came to pass. And Netanyahu is at the helm of that nation at a time of war. Fast forward, if God did it for Netanyahu and said it about Netanyahu, the same scenario, they're trying to indict Trump. They're trying to make him guilty. They would love to throw him in jail. But if God raised up Netanyahu, as he said, May 23rd, 2021, he's not done with President Trump, and he will be brought back to the place that God has said to this country, don't get in agreement with the media, the fake news. Get in agreement with the Word of God and with what God has said prophetically, and we will see this country made great again. Yeah, amen. In fact, amen. let me bring in uh, Greg Stevens. Uh, Greg, you, you've got a word from our founder about what happened today. Uh, I think now's a great time for you to share that. I do. I spoke with him. The verdict came down while we were on Victory News, and as soon as the news was over, I spoke with Brother Copeland by phone uh, just after that verdict, and here's what he said. First of all, he said, we have to pray the will of God be done. We pray the will of God. And I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. Then he said this. He goes, I want you to read the 112th Psalm, and I want you to read it to the people. So here it is. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on the earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Unto the upright there arises light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man deals graciously and lends. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he will never be shaken. The righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. And he drew, he drew point to that. He will never be shaken. He will not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He will not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemies. Let me read that to you again because he emphasized that. His heart is established. He will not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemies. He is dispersed abroad. He is given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His honor will be exalted with honor. Then he said, I want you to focus on this last verse, and he said it in only that Kenneth Copeland voice, real bold. He said, and stand on it in faith. It's verse 10. The wicked will see it and be grieved. He will gnash his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. That's the chapter he told us to read tonight. Then he said for us to pray the will of God. And so in doing that, he said to pray this, our father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our sins for we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Gene, he went on to say this, and I thought this was very important. He admonished that we can't get into grief and that violence is not the answer. Talked about letting the peace of God that passes all understanding rule and reign in our heart. But don't respond the way the heathen respond. Don't respond uh, with violence. We cannot condone that in any way. What he's basically saying is what Pastor Hank said. It's going to turn around on them. That was his words for us tonight. It sure is. Sure is. And let me bring uh, Rick back in here. Rick, uh, 
you know, what the words there of not response. That really is, I think, what the left yeah. and the liberals want us to do is to lash out. And then they can say, look, here, you got another J6 happening. Uh, right. Is that what you're seeing? Man, that would play right into their hands. Absolutely important uh, for that word to be heard. What Greg just said is is vital for people to understand. Uh, you know, MLK said it uh, this way. He said, hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And this is hate. They hate Donald Trump. But don't forget what Trump has said many times. They don't, they're don't. they not after him. They're after us. He just stands in the way. And so anybody at home right now is thinking, how can y'all possibly you know, be talking about Trump and the Bible and the same program and talking about what the Lord is saying and talking about Trump? You know, he's got mean tweets or he, he makes these terrible endorsements or he's petty sometimes, all this kind of... As Hank said, it's not about Trump. Trump is a vehicle that God is using to help bring our nation back, just like he's using you at home and just like he's using us here at Flashpoint. And so we have to respond the way the Bible tells us to respond. That doesn't mean we're not firm. doesn't mean we don't have backbone. doesn't mean we don't stand, but we do it in a peaceable way. We have all the peaceable tools we need to turn this thing around. It's going to take a lot of hard work, but we have to do it peaceably. And, Gene, you know there are people at home right now that are so frustrated. They're at the, you know, we say, I'm at my wits end. Right. I don't even know what that means. My wits end. But they're at their wits end, whatever that means. I mean, they're, they want to do something to make a difference. Well, it's not violent. This is not a situation where you storm the gate with the pitchforks. This is a situation where you go to the Lord, you spend more time in prayer and reading the word, but you also take action. Bring your friends and family over to your house. Start doing a biblical civics class. Start talking about the things you can do. Start getting more involved. Go stand at the polls with signs. Start donating donating to candidates, start donating to causes. There's lots of action to take, but it's all peaceable action. That's very important for us to keep in mind. So true. So true. All right, let's keep going. So much more ground to cover. Uh, let me go back to you, Mike. Well, let's kind of check in around America. Uh, you've got, uh, I think, a clip from Byron Donalds. Is that correct? Uh, Gene, exactly. Florida Congressman Byron Donalds had this to say shortly after the verdict. This is a disgrace, flat out. This was a disaster for the country, disaster for the city of New York, disaster for New York State, disaster for America. You cannot have a prosecution when they come out with your indictment, not even tell you what the underlying crime is. Through the whole trial, they wouldn't identify what the underlying crime is. And the only time they do it is in closing arguments when the defense has already made their closing arguments. That is a travesty. This is, there is a reason why we have constitutional protection to be able to have your, your case adjudicated in a court of law. Not like this, not where the fix is in from day one. Now, all right. Oh, I want to compare that with the Manhattan DA. Uh, set it up, Mike. Yep, here's Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg. And this is what he said. He came out and held a press conference shortly after this verdict came down. And he spoke for a while, but I thought this was possibly the most important part. The 12... Everyday jurors vowed to make a decision based on the evidence and the law, and the evidence and the law alone. Their deliberations led them to a unanimous conclusion, beyond a reasonable doubt, that the defendant, Donald J. Trump, is guilty of 34 counts of falsifying business records in the first degree. And while this defendant may be unlike any other in American history, we arrived at this trial and ultimately today at this verdict in the same manner as every other case that comes through the courtroom doors. All right. I love it that these guys are now being, they're recorded. Uh, Hank and Rick, I mean, this will play back in the future. We're going to play all of these things right back yeah. when this thing falls <clears throat> apart. Uh, let me go to you first, Hank. You saw Alvin Bragg and Byron Donald, two uh, mm -hmm. totally different responses to what happened today. Uh, what do you think uh, about this this leftist response in this Manhattan DA? We're going to get into some background on him, but yeah. I want to get your take on what you just yeah. saw. Well, first of all, again, this is no surprise. This was all a setup, including... The, the jury. And all of it is going to continue to be exposed. But, you know, Pastor Gene, as oftentimes when I look at things, I look at things and, and God will do a play on words with me. And, and I look at the guy's name, Bragg, 
And that's what he's doing. He's bragging that he now has brought 34, you know, uh, indictments against President Trump and that he successfully now uh, has got a guilty verdict. And really, that's what they want. They just want the, the fact that in the actual perception of things in the nation that President Trump is guilty of 34 counts when really most don't even know what in the heck it is. And there's really not been a real uh, uh, clarity on the crime committed and such. And so they're hoping that this is going to sway people, uh, thinking that, no. How but the fact that his name is Bragg, listen, people that go around bragging <clears throat> have an element of pride. And God specifically said that he gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. And God will deal with the prideful. And he said that he will bring the prideful down low. And I'm telling you, this thing is not over. And it's going to be amazing. They can set their uh, July 11th date all day long. But there is still a lot of time between now and how about you that are watching to continue to be like Moses. Stand up in the face of God and say, God, we are expecting you to intervene against injustice. We cannot stand like they did in the book of Malachi, where they said, is justice ever going to come? In fact, God had to rebuke them and say, don't say that, because God is a God of righteousness and justice. And if we will continue to stand for that, it will happen. I want to say this last thing. You know, Brother Copeland, such a brilliant man, and I thank God for him. And he said the word of the Lord was Psalm 112. We need to pray that out and speak it out. But something that's also very important is Exodus chapter 14. And I'll say this very quickly. Israel was in a place where it looked hopeless, like what some of you are thinking tonight. What, what's going to happen with our country? And God said to Moses, quit crying and shrieking out to me. Lift up your authority. We're not talking about violence. We're not talking about the rod of violence. He said, lift up your rod of authority. And do what I said, go take the land. And, and, and he said this, he said, and when you do stand still, you will see the salvation of God. Now he's not saying don't do anything. He's saying, exercise your authority, speak the word, exercise your faith, command the mountain of this uh, absolute lying demon that is released over our nation to be bound. And then he said, Exodus 14, 14, which I believe is gonna come to pass. When we exercise our authority, it says, I, God said, I then will fight for you, and you won't even have to lift a finger. In other words, now God has gotten himself involved with what is going uh, on right now with President Trump. And really, all of us, we're on trial. That's what President Trump, this thing represents. And what it's done is it's now brought another level of God's divine intervention. And I'm telling you, we are going to see some incredible turnarounds. But we have to speak right. We have to get in agreement right. with God's word and also what God has been saying prophetically. And I tell you what, Pastor Gene, you are going to see something significant, just like in all the other cases, manifest right. that is going to turn this whole thing around. So that's going to be great. I agree. All right. You watch. Yeah, it sure will. It sure will. All right. Greg Stevens, let me go to you. you. Got some background, and I don't want to get too far away from that clip without you giving us background on uh, D.A. Bragg there. Yeah, if you if they'll put that picture up of D.A. Bragg in the press conference, there's a guy standing next to him. Uh, you can see him standing right there to his left. Now that's Matthew Colangelo. He worked for the DNC Democratic National Conference. Then uh, he was number three at the Justice Department. So he's the number three guy at Justice. He leaves that position and went to work for Bragg in a county DA position. Now, Trump, as you know, was under a gag order from Judge Bershon. He couldn't say anything. If he even said Matthew Delangelo's name, he would go to jail. At tonight's press conference, to Pastor Hank's point, Bragg has Coangelo standing right there next to him. He is, uh, he was number three at the Justice Department, and you can't tell me now that the Biden administration was not involved in this. There's an old saying from the Stalin days of the Soviet Union for political prisoners, and it was, it's attributed to Leventry Berea. Here's what it says, show me the man, and I'll find you the crime or show you the crime. And that's exactly what happened tonight. Gene? All right, Rick, exactly. uh, you hear Greg there. What do you, what do you think? 
Well, first of all, I have to school Hank a little bit here because as a Texan, I know a little something about bragging, all right? And uh, and my mama said, if it's true, it ain't bragging. And so if what Alvin Bragg is saying is true, then he's not bragging. But the fact is, what he's saying is not true, and it's so easy to prove on so many levels. What did he say? He said the jury made its decision based on the evidence and the law, and only on the evidence and the law. Well, if you're the defendant and you're not allowed to present evidence like the Constitution allows you to do, if you're not allowed to present witnesses, how is the jury possibly making their decision based on the evidence? And they're not making it based on the law because Alvin Bragg made up the law by stringing these things together, by ignoring the statute of limitations, by making this stuff up. So what he's saying is an absolute lie. And then he said we're doing this in, in the same manner as we do every other case. Absolutely not true. Again, violated the statute of limitations, strung a bunch of stuff together, didn't prosecute anybody else on these kind of things. So he's absolutely lying. I think actually Hank was saying it exactly right. I just had to pick on him a little bit. But there's no question that these people don't care about the truth. What Greg said is what's been done from the beginning. Show me the man, I'll show you the crime. That's what they've done with Trump. That's what they've done with these J6 defendants. That's what they do with the pro, pro-life advocates that they're prosecuting. These are Marxist. They don't care about the law. They don't care about truth. They're willing to lie straight to our faces, right there on camera, even after the trial. We have to know what we're up against and have peace in knowing that God's in charge, have joy in knowing that we know who's sovereign and who and who's going to win in the very end, but we have to be firm. Yeah. And yeah. and even what, what Hank was saying, you, when you stand still, you still got to be standing, right? It doesn't say lay on the couch still. That's right. We got to mm-hmm. stand up. Right. We got to all come together. We got to be willing to be engaged in this thing, but do it peaceably and know that God's going to fight this battle yeah. with us. It sure is. In fact, just relax and know. You've heard, you've heard some great stuff. This is that's like two hours worth of content in the first half hour. But we got so much more to talk about uh, what's coming up. We're going to go to break when we come back much more, and we're going to find out where Hank got that shirt. Don't go away. We'll be right back. And welcome back to the second half of Flashpoint. Yes, I am not in the studio. I'm here at the beach on vacation, and that's why all of this happened. It is truly, uh, no, it's not my fault. But uh, it, we're glad you're here anyway. And uh, we put this together. Thank you to everybody joining us. We had a previously scheduled program to play tonight. We'll play that later. This is more important. I want to talk to you about Ohio coming up, our next event in June. It's the 27th and 28th, right there uh, outside of Columbus, Flashpoint Live, Ohio. Listen, you do not want to miss a minute. This is at the Gary and Drinda Cassis Church uh, right there. So it's Faith Life Church. If you want to know more about it, 2024flashpoint.live, New Albany, Ohio. That was the name of the city. Uh, I want to see you there. Listen, there's we are working on some great things. We're working on some great things uh, for that. And then we're just so close. I can't announce it yet, but it's going to be great. You're going to enjoy it. Of course, Rick Green will be there, Luke Ball, Lance Wall now, Pastor Hank Kuhneman, and some other surprises. Uh, if you remember last year, Ohio was a very special event. I promise you, in the big tent, it's going to be special Again, it's a free event. We just want to know you're coming. Just go to 2024flashpoint.live and register and say, hey, I'm coming, and we'll see you there, and we want to see you there. So come on, be a part. All right, uh, let's check in with some what other folks are, are saying. Mike, uh, you got a famous governor that's uh, chimed in today. I do, Gene. And before I get to that, I want to let you know that Donald Trump has come out and said uh, tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Eastern time, he is going to be speaking out, making remarks from outside of Trump Tower. Right now, I want to talk to you about Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and in part what he posted on X. This is his reaction to today's verdict. Represent, today's verdict represents the culmination of a legal process that has been bent to the political will of the actors involved, a leftist process prosecutor, a partisan judge, and a jury reflective of one of the most liberal enclaves in America, all in an effort to get Donald Trump. Gene. All right, uh, Rick, you hear this. Now, let's remember, this is Ron DeSantis, who was very much uh, running against Donald Trump. And as I remember, you were a big fan. Uh, so in in this, are you surprised to see uh, Governor DeSantis come out in a big support this way? Is this a really a rallying cry for the Republican Party? 
Well, it's definitely a rallying cry, not just for the Republican Party, but a lot of the people in the middle that don't consider themselves partisans at all and, and don't even identify Republican or Democrat, maybe not even political at all. So I think those are the people that it's really going to rally. Uh, Governor DeSantis said very similar to that um, even even almost a year ago when a lot of this stuff happened. So actually, those are similar statements. Um, I, I, I think he's, you know, he loves justice. He, he disagreed with Donald Trump's um, you know, being the, being the nominee this time, and that's why he ran. But I, I, I think uh, it's not just DeSantis. I mean, you look out there at, at Huckabee Sanders, you look at uh, most of the governors, Republican governors, and uh, and even some of the middle of the road. You know, Gene, remember even RFK, if, uh, what, about three, four weeks ago, had an interview where he was asked if Donald Trump was, I can't remember the term, was it tyrant or something like that? And, uh, and he said, actually, it's Joe Biden that's the tyrant. It's Joe Biden that has abused the system, that's gone after his political opponents. Think about what we're watching happen right here. We're watching the nominee for one of the two major parties, the former president of the United States, be tried to be taken off the table, taken out of the fight by his political opponents. The president of the current president of the United States is using the Department of Justice, as Greg pointed out, number three at the Department of Justice and local DAs all across the country, multiple different prosecutions to try to take out his political opponent, remove him from the table. This is third world banana republic stuff and it's happening right here in America. Thankfully, people are recognizing that as bad. They're recognizing that as, wait a minute, this is America. This isn't Venezuela. This isn't Russia. This kind of stuff is not supposed to happen here. So it's a rallying cry for sure. But I think what's gonna surprise the Democrats is that it doesn't just rally Republicans. It's gonna rally independents and Democrats to come to our side. That's why you're seeing them flock to Donald Trump they're defending the system. They're not even defending Donald Trump. They're defending justice. They want to return to truth, justice, right. and the American way. And, and like you said, you're, you're seeing this on all sides of the aisle. Uh, the left, the right, the up, the down, even the libertarians are in agreement <laughs> with a lot of this. All right, uh, let me show you this clip from uh, Trump attorney Will Sharp about what he said about what happened today. This is a made-up case. This was a sham trial in front of a deeply, deeply, irretrievably biased judge. It's absolutely shameful. The only thing that today's verdict proves is that Joe Biden and his political allies have successfully weaponized our legal system and weaponized the courts in a way that is unprecedented in American history and in a way that should, frankly, alarm all Americans who are concerned about the future of our constitutional republic. And I think there's a lot of you Americans that are concerned about the Constitutional Republic. Now, of course, what you've learned in the first half of the program, we're coming at this whole situation in the spirit of faith. Uh, you remember Psalm 112 that Greg read uh, from Brother Copeland. We are coming at this from a place of faith. But Pastor Hank, it's actually encouraging to me to see these guys come alongside and say, this really is a sham. This is not anywhere close to being what this nation was founded upon. That's right. Well, you have what's going on here. You have the lying uh, liberal uh, that want you know you to think something that really isn't. And then there's the voice of truth, and you're hearing the voice of truth. This is a sham. But you know, one of the things, Pastor Gene, that I think is very important, and that is, you know, there's a principle that we find in the book of Exodus, and it says that the more that Israel, the nation, was afflicted, the more they grew. And I think that's what's happening with uh, President Trump's uh, poll numbers. The more that they continue to do this, it's backfiring. Again, it's flopping, and it's going to continue to flip, and his poll numbers continue to rise. And I think they've made a a, a bad mistake, uh, these uh, liberal uh, lunatics that are thinking that they can get by with this. Uh, it's backfiring. But I do want to bring up something that I feel like the Holy Spirit kind of uh, alerted me as, at the break. And he reminded me of Psalm 106, verse 7, where God was speaking to the nation. And he said, listen, he said, you have forgotten the multitude of my mercies, and you have provoked me at the Red Sea. So how does that relate to today? 
It relates to the fact that God has showed this country a multitude of mercies over and over and over again. And if we will continue to stand and remind God and bring in remembrance the, the merciful acts that he has shown, we will see God continue to show those merciful acts. But what we don't want to do is provoke him at the Red Sea. What did they do at the Red Sea? Well, they, they attacked the leader that God had chosen to bring deliverance to them. You could call it MAGA, make Israel great again. In our case, it's make America great again, MAGA. What do they do? They, at the, uh, the Red Sea, they wanted to go back to socialism. They were slaves. They were brick makers under a socialistic type government under Pharaoh. And God said, you are provoking me. So the last thing we need to do is, is we can't talk wrong. We can't think that socialism is going to be the future currently or of your children. It's going to backfire, and it is. And the other thing that we have to remember something, listen, why are we getting worked up by fake 34 indictments or a guilty charge? Why are we getting worked up? We, we have to remind ourselves, did not God, when President Trump was standing with 16 other contestants in 2016, it didn't look like this guy Donald Trump was going to go anywhere. He won the presidency. Fast forward, they thought, okay, we are going to get this man, the liberal left. And, and, and they tried the fake dossier, the Russia collusion. Come on, Russia, 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 Russia. They, they tried many different attempts to discredit this man. But every single time, God intervened. And what happened? All of those things, like feathers, fell apart. Do you think that God is going to allow this country and this man to go through all of those things and he was cleared and that there was nothing that they could prove on this man? And then suddenly it all falls apart? Absolutely not. That's exactly what the devil wants you to think. And it's exactly what the liberal lunatics want you to think. Once again, God shall arise again and we will see. God's intervention, and we're going to see things begin to turn. You know why? First Kings 18, 41. It took a prophetic ear to declare mm. something that had no visible evidence. Elijah said, I right. hear the sound of an abundance of rain, and there was no evidence. But guess what happened? The very thing he heard manifest. And I'm telling you, stay the course. What God has been saying, what you heard Brother Copeland say, and what we've been saying for almost four years, is continuing to come to pass, and it will reign great upon this country of God's justice. Amen. And that's what we're going to keep speaking, those imprecatory prayers for the justice Amen. to happen here in America. It's going to happen. All right, Greg, before I go to another video, uh, give us a little background on uh, these jurors and the instructions they were given. There seems to be a lot of uh, hubbub about all of that. Well, the, the jurors, what's interesting to me, and Rick's, Rick's a, a lawyer, I'm not a lawyer, uh, the two lawyers overrode everything they knew about trials to, to do the guilty verdict. I have, this is the complete instructions from the judge before they went into the, uh, the chambers. Here's some interesting things. Uh, um, he, makes, he makes points about evidence. He said, conclude that a fact exists or does not exist based on proof of some other fact or other facts. He, he begins to talk about specific uh, limiting instructions, specific evidence. He talks about AMI from David Pecker. He talks about Michael Cohen's specific evidence. He talks about the Wall Street Journal news articles and other hearsay evidence. And what I find interesting, and, and uh, maybe Rick can speak to this, I don't, I've never heard of, and anybody I've ever asked about this today has not heard of any judge pointing the jury to specific evidence in this trial to remind them. They were not allowed by law to take these instructions into the jury room with them. I find that very interesting. Yeah, all right, uh, Rick, let me get you to weigh in on that. Yeah, and, and, and not only that, just the, the direction, like you're saying, direction to specific evidence, but then... 
you know, basically saying, hey, guys, just come up with any combination that you possibly can back there in the jury room. Just give me that guilty verdict. I mean, that's basically what he he was saying to these guys. Let's let's manipulate this process, whatever way we got to, to get that guilty verdict. And then literally instructs the jury so many things that and I heard Jonathan Turley saying this, and he's a lot smarter than I am on these actual trial tactics. Basically saying there there are definitely um, uh, uh, things to appeal on here that should overturn the case. It's just it's just so in, in, incredibly obvious. But I, I wanted to, if I could, re respond to something that Hank was saying about uh, about Trump and about where this thing is going and, and and God's hand on this. Just for people to think about the practical effects of what's happening. I was with Lance this last weekend in South Carolina, and Lance was. Uh, talking about how God takes us through certain things in our life to prepare us for particular moments, that that such a time as this Esther-type moment. And I think what God's doing with Donald Trump right now is radicalizing him to the Constitution. In other words, taking him through tough times. Think about what James, when, when we say counted all joy, when you experience various trials. Why? Because God uses the trial to create perseverance and to make you perfect and complete, lacking nothing. I think Trump is going through all of this to toughen him up and to make him love those constitutional principles so much, and suddenly for the first time in his life, like five years ago, I don't think he would have had the same healthy respect and absolute desire to defend due process, to restore the Constitution, and to wipe out the Department of Justice and these DAs that are destroying our system. I don't think that would have happened if he hadn't gone through these things. So it's helped to radicalize him and make him someone that will fight for the Constitution in a way that we never could have dreamed possible. So I think that's a very, very healthy, good thing for us. But Gene, I got to say, I'm worried about the reputation of Flashpoint. I am worried about you know, all those people out there that watch Flashpoint because you follow to the truth no matter what, and you stick with your word. And Gene, I'm sorry, you said when we went to break, we were going to find out where Hank got this shirt, and you haven't said anything since then. So I'm afraid you're hurting the reputation. Maybe it's because you're on vacation, you're well, at the beach, you're relaxed. Maybe your brain's not working quite as well because I, I don't <laughs> – anyway, I'm just saying, man, the reputation of Flashpoint is on the line here. I know. It sure is. And you see, what I was doing here, Rick, was building momentum, building oh, anticipation oh, my bad. until we got to that point. I jumped the gun. Uh, I jumped the gun. Yeah, this all right. We'll, we'll get to the shirt before the end before the end of the program. But let me go to uh, Mike Garofalo. Mike, I think you got a U.S. attorney clip ready. What's, what's next? Yes, Gene. Here is a reaction from the verdict of the verdict from former U.S. attorney Brett Tolman. Take a listen. There are plenty of grounds for an appeal to reverse this case. Um, I'm, not, I'm not talking about, you know, gray areas. I'm talking about black and white violations by a judge and the evidence that he, he allowed in and what he didn't allow in and then the jury, the jury instructions themselves. So that was Brett Tolman, um, and we've got some other sound I want to show you right now. Also, here is Republican uh, Michael Daigle's reaction. I think that there are uh, a lot of people out there that believe that this particular case was brought for purely political reasons, not legal reasons. He has to see whether or not it's going to uh, uphold on appeal. So, Gene, I kind of feel like tonight's the night of like, OK, let's let's react, get all these reactions as to what people think. And, and later tonight and into tomorrow, for sure. What is next? Where does sure. this go from here? What's going to happen with Donald Trump? We do know that the sentencing is going to be July 11th. That's what it's scheduled for. And then the Republican National Convention that we are going to in Milwaukee begins on July 15th. Back to you. Yeah. Uh, and I'm glad you brought that up, ladies and gentlemen. We are. Flashpoint Victory News. We will be at the Republican National Convention all week long covering what's going on there. Flashpoint, of course, and Victory News. Uh, Mike will be down on the floor. We'll we'll give you the latest of what's happening. Looks like it's uh, shaping up to be an interesting time for sure. Uh, but Mike, I don't want to run out of time before I get to uh, this last clip because I want to hear what Judge Janine uh, Pirro has to say. And you had somebody else there too. Yep, Judge Janine Pirro and Laura Ingram. Take a listen. Our job right now is to continue to have faith and support this man as he goes forward, because he's the strongest man I've ever met, Laura. I'm going to repeat it, Judge. Don't get mad. Get motivated. You heard it, Gene. Don't get mad. Get motivated.
I love it. I love it. I love it. Don't get mad. Get motivated, Rick. Yeah, man. That's uh, that's the whole thing, and that and that's why we can be righteously angry and joyful at the same time, and taking those correct actions. Uh, you know, Mike mentioned a few minutes ago that that uh, President Trump was going to speak tomorrow morning. One of the things that's bothered me so much about this, I've never been a fan of gag orders. I think that's so unconstitutional to say somebody cannot speak about the injustice that's happening to them in the courtroom and the way this judge has done that to the president of the United States that's in the middle of a campaign and for a month has had all, all of this happening to him. So I'm excited about him being able to speak tomorrow. I think being able to get his voice back and being able to speak speak freely is essential to the process of even. So looking forward to what's going to happen tomorrow. And I think Mike's right. We get all the reactions tonight. Tomorrow, we fight, man. We fight to restore our country and bring back that truth. So everybody needs to use their voice. Do not self-censor. Do not silence Amen. yourself. Think about if you had been Trump and been told you couldn't speak. Nobody's told you that at home. You can speak. Don't be afraid. Speak loudly right now. That's right. All right, Pastor Hank, tell us, where'd you get the shirt? Well, first of all, before I answer that, I want to ask Pastor Gene, you're at the beach. And uh, your shirt is white, and I'm looking at your face, and it doesn't look like you're getting any sun. And uh, so I want to ask you, are you tanning? Because it doesn't look like it, Pastor <laughs> Gene. Uh, uh, yeah, I've been out there. I have All makeup right. on to, to oh, even oh, is that what, okay. my complexion out. All right. Don't, don't take the focus so, off your shirt. Tell us where'd you get the shirt. Well, you're, you're picking on me because it's plaid, and that is always, you know, I guess when people wear plaid, right, they're supposed to be older. But I got this shirt from Pastor Doji, a spiritual son, who happens to uh, absolutely bless me with many of the shirts that I wear. So that's where I got it. I don't know. Is there something unique about it? Is it? Is it? Does it look like prison bars? Or <laughs> what is the deal? I would never. I, I would know. never Why say that, Rick... Pastor Hank. Okay. Well, it does look like a little bit like you know, maybe Mr. Rogers, but things are going to be okay in all of your neighborhoods. There you go. That's all I could say. I don't have a good answer, Pastor Gene, except. <laughs> no, it's good. All right, okay. Rick, uh, your final thoughts as yeah. we wrap up here. Yeah, you know, we've kind of said it all night long, but I think just encouraging people at home not to give up. Don't don't get so frustrated that you think the system's broken beyond repair. I do think the system is broken. I think we're seeing a lot of injustice right now. But don't forget the good side here. This is waking up millions of people, and we have the answers. The Bible gives us the answers for everything in life, even how a justice system should work, what kind of lawyers and judges we should have. So see this as an opportunity and realize that what's happening to Donald Trump right now is opening the eyes of millions of Americans, and we need to be there with the answers for them. We need to be biblical citizens, and we need to train our neighbors to do the same. We need to look for those ways to take action. Share Flashpoint with as many people as you can. The Flashpoint Armor is growing and America needs it to grow. We need to teach people the truth about how our system works. Let's get people to fall in love once again with due process and all the things that are being violated right now against Donald Trump and a lot of other people that haven't had a voice to be able to rally people to their cause. People like Rebecca Lawrence, the praying grandma. Remember whenever she got convicted and we said, Thank God. Thank you, Lord, that, you, that she got convicted because people will learn that the system's broken. Donald Trump just right. got convicted. Thank you, Lord, that Donald Trump got convicted because now people are going to wake up. Let's take advantage of this opportunity to rally Americans and teach them the principles of liberty. All right, Pastor Hank, uh, one minute to wrap. Well, I think one of the things we've got to remember is there's a righteous rebellion, and it's not having to be violence. It's a righteous rebellion of people saying enough is enough. And I want to read a scripture very quickly that Robert Slurden had given to me a while back. Ezra 9, 9, God has not forsaken us in our bondage, but extended mercy in the sight of the kings, reviving us to set up the house of God and repair that which has been desolate. And I believe that is what's happening right now. And we just have to continue to stand strong and we're going to see the salvation of God over America. Amen. We sure are. And so I, I'm going to pray now. Let's pray and wrap the show up, and I'll give you some instructions before we go. Heavenly Father, Lord, I yeah. thank you for all of these men that have spoken tonight and for and for Mike and the Victory News team that has helped us do this show at the last minute. Father, I thank you that we do operate in faith, as Brother Copeland has taught us. We do stand yes. 
for righteousness. We do stand in faith for what we're going to see come out the other side. Father, I thank you for encouragement for those, for Trump and his team that it feels that they've been, uh, the yeah. injustice that's been served. And Father, I thank you. And we command justice in this situation. In yeah, Jesus' we name, we thank you for it. Amen and amen. All right, listen, I amen. want to make sure amen. that you know if you need something, someone to pray, there's a phone number, 877-281-6297. Prayer is very key to what's going on in America. We pray, but then we go do. We act, and that's why it's so important. That's why you watch Flashpoint. We've got a record number of people watching tonight. I know you wanted to find out what do we have to say? What does the word have to say? Listen, if one thing you need to do is go back and do with the instructions that Greg gave from Kenneth Copeland. Go back and reread Psalm 112 in the New King James Version. Pour over it. Study it. See what God is saying. All right? Because, listen, there is so much more to this 